Good evening, everybody. The April 17, 2023 regular meeting of the Simmons and Township Committee is now called to order. Please, everyone, uh, rise and join me in saluting the flag, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231. Notice of this meeting was published in the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 6, 2023. Uh, roll call, please, Madam Secretary, please. Yes, Mayor. Mr. Forner. Here. Mrs. Craybill. Present. Mr. Sega. Here. Deputy Mayor Tonda. Here. Mayor Miguel. Here. Thank you. Okay, next uh, item on our agenda is the committee liaison reports. Uh, start off with committee member Horner, finance and economic development. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have one quick um, item, and it is in regard to something that is on the agenda this evening uh, pertaining to uh, the finance department. We will be introducing uh, tonight the 2023 budget, and I am happy to report on behalf of the staff and the township committee to the residents uh, that once again, uh, this proposed budget uh, sees no increase to the municipal tax rate for 2023. That's awesome. And that concludes my report. That's awesome. Thank you, Mr. Horner. Uh, Committee Member Crable, Parks and Recreation and Veterans Affairs, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for Parks and Recreation, the township received a $79,000 grant from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Division of Local Government Services. This grant will be used for continued park improvements throughout the community. Uh, for Veterans Affairs, the township is making plans for a Memorial Day ceremony to tentatively be held Friday, May 26th here at Town Hall. Event times and specific program information will be available in the coming weeks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Crable. Uh, next will be Committee Member Segrist, Public Works, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for Public Works this past month and, and upcoming, brush collection has experienced delays due to the recent severe storm on April 1st, uh, and that's significantly impacted the brush collection. However, <coughs> residents should continue to follow the brush collection schedule as the Public Works Department is expecting to be back on schedule within the next week. Residents are also reminded to keep all curbside brush piles at least 10 feet away from all sewer drains per the New Jersey Department of Environmental <clears throat> Protection. The Public Works Department will be hosting a spring cleanup day on May 13th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Public Works facility. Acceptable items for disposal include paints, motor oil, antifreeze, electronics, televisions, brush, branches, metal items, automobile and small truck tires, car batteries, and large trash items. PSENG's paving contractor, South State, is currently working on road restoration on Meeting House Drive, Meeting House Court, Windsor Drive, Windsor Court, Glenwood Court, and Orchard Way. Further pavement restorations are expected to resume in late May. For additional information, or concerns, well, let me see, for additional information or concerns pertaining to the project, please call 833-661-6400. Residents are reminded that private contractors are responsible for hauling away any and all debris created from tree trimming or tree removal on residential property. Private contractors are not authorized to play, place tree parts at the curb for township collection. The township was recently notified that they have secured a $1.1 million in funding from Newt NJDOT's local freight impact grant program. The funds will be utilized for pedestrian safety improvements on Union Landing Road. Township engineer Remington and Vernick will oversee the project design, bidding and inspections and construction is tentatively scheduled 
for the spring of 2024. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Segris. Deputy Mayor Conda, Administration and Public and Health and Senior Services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a few housekeeping items as I periodically bring up. The Cinnamon newsletter for April has been published and can be read on the Township website, the Township Facebook page, or through Nixle. Contains information, as always, on events in the Township, including parks and recreation and library activities, public works information, and much more. One item in particular that I will single out this month is that the Municipal Alliance is sponsoring a health fair at the middle school on June 3rd. Um, and I would encourage residents to subscribe to both the Nixle alerts to get all this information to your phone, as well as subscribe to the Township YouTube channel where you can find the recordings of these meetings, as well as various other Township events. And that is all I have for this evening. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Conda. Uh, public safety, I don't have anything for this this month. I will bring it up to date uh, next month. And that uh, moves us on to discussion items. We have a couple on our agenda tonight. First will be PSE and G, uh, gas main replacement and road restoration project update. Representatives of PSG are here tonight to provide us with an update on their ongoing gas main gas gas main replacement. That's hard to say, and road restoration work. Thank you, Mayor and Committee persons this evening. I'm Karen Fryer, Regional Public Affairs Manager, PSEG. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank all for your support from OEM, police, fire, community with the tornado and the devastation and the immediate cleanup with PSEG. We greatly appreciate the teamwork when events like this happen. Our dedicated crews work 24 seven with you. And I just wanted to share that moment of gratitude. I'm now going to quickly introduce Kelly Sutter. Kelly is the project manager for the gas main replacement project here and all across Burlington County. With great pleasure, Kelly. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having us tonight to provide a quick update regarding our ongoing construction, um, paving, and new project to start. So as a, I think an accomplishment and a noteworthy, um, since two, February of 21, we started the gas main replacement work for what we'll call uh, BU 401 and 402, which are our first two maps. And we did 100% complete that work as of February um, last two months ago. So that was a completion of 37 miles of old gas main infrastructure, um, both steel, cast iron, that we did over two years. Um, significant project for PSNG gas across the state, one of the largest maps that we've completed. Um, that impacted about 2,900 residents, um, directly impacting. We were in their homes, we were replacing their services, let alone uh, the extended community with traffic and getting through town. So we, we just wanna thank everybody in the room, the police, the administration, um, the director of public works, the whole department, just making this a successful project. We had less than 1% um, customer complaints that were all uh, resolved in a timely manner. It was less than about 30 that called into the hotline over two years time. And that's uh, thank you to everyone for that success. With that said, that first uh, phase of work, I'll call it, um, we are um, currently paving, I think you noted a little bit earlier, on a few roads this week to finish up uh, a couple, a neighborhood that we weren't able to at the end of last uh, fall winter in 22. And then we're getting ready to complete the next phase, which would be the entirety of all the roads uh, left to pave. And we're looking to start that tentatively around May 30th, um, weather permitting. Just to note, we are um, organizing the schedule with the police and the DPW so that we are doing the main roads, New Albany, Parry, Pomona, when school is out, so that we're eliminating um, those road roadblocks for the school. So we're, we're juggling the schedule around that. Um, as always, our outreach will continue to be performed um, that we've done to date. So with that said, I just wanted to touch base. We At the last council meeting, we discussed this high level. Um, our next phase of work to complete the replacement work in Cinnamonson um, includes uh, four major county roadways, that being Church Road from Route 130 to the Morristown border, 
Riverton Road from Route 130 to the Morristown border and Branch Pike basically from Route 130 uh, through the circle area at Riverton Road. It also includes Fork Landing Road, Municipal Road. So we have a, a decent amount of major thoroughfares that we're getting ready to start. Um, we've had pre-construction meetings with both the county, um, Cinnamons and police to talk about traffic control. So we're on the same page and we are getting ready to schedule our first pre-con meeting and that work would start May 1st. Um, with that said, I'll stop there. If there's any questions, concerns? Anybody have any questions? Any light speed questions? Mike? Nope. Will you be doing the bridge that on Fork Landing that takes you out to 73 coming from Cinnaminson? No, I know that there was a couple questions, but our work, actually, we already have good infrastructure going past. Um, we're only going, sorry, on Fork Landing, we're going towards the middle school, towards Branch, and we're only going about two to 300 feet um, towards Linola. And then the rest of that is already uh, newer infrastructure plastic. So there's nothing being replaced down there. Got it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, so if anything comes up, uh, if anybody in the audience has any questions, concerns, Mark Swan is here. He's our outreach specialist. Mark has some business cards he can provide you with if you have any follow-up questions after the meeting. Otherwise, um, all of our information that's being shared and communicated um, the police are sharing as well on your on social media we have the phone number and our website that's accessible for anybody to contact us okay thank you thank, thank you very thank much you. thank you uh, on behalf of the township committee and the township i just want to thank psc and g for the uh fantastic job you guys did during the uh after the tornado thank you i know it had to be rough for you guys but thank you all right <clears throat> All right, next on the agenda will be uh, New Jersey Department of Transportation proposed Route 130, Riverton Road intersection improvements. Representatives from New Jersey DOT are here tonight to provide us with an update for the proposal. Proposed intersection improvements for Route 130, Riverton Road. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Kimberly Nance. I'm with the New Jersey Department of Transportation Office of Government Community Relations. I'm the regional manager for Burlington County, and we've been asked to come here by the council to present to you our Route 130 Riverton Intersection Improvement Project. Our consultants are setting up, and um, we're going, I'm going to turn it over for the introduction of actually what the project is to my project manager, which is Mr. Alam. So at this time, I'll ask him to come to the podium, please. Good evening. My name is Muhammad Alam, and I am the project manager of uh, this uh, intersection improvement project. This intersection improvement project has three locations. Me, sir, in could you keep your voice up? Okay. Or this intersection, it's okay? Hold on a second. The chief's going to help you out. Stand up. Okay. Because I'm fasting, <laughs> my energy is low. That's okay. Now it's okay? You can hear me? Everybody hear Great. Everybody hear yes. us? Okay. So this intersection improvement project, which has three locations in three townships and in three counties, this township, this intersection, and this county has this one, uh, Route 130 and uh, Riverton Road. Uh, we started this project, the CD phase, the uh, concept development phase started a uh, long time ago, maybe before COVID, and we had a local official uh, briefing over here we presented this project uh, to you guys. Uh, Eric was, I think Eric was there and county engineer was there. But because uh, of the COVID and this uh, lack of communication between NJDOT and uh, Cinnamon Township, uh, there was a gap. So after that, uh, we selected uh, our uh, design consultant, urban engineer for the design phase, for the preliminary and design phase. So we started the work, Urban Genius started the work, and uh, then we uh, revised the, our preliminary preferred uh, alternative. We revised that. Uh, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago, or maybe 10 days ago, uh, to discuss the uh, revised preliminary engineering alternatives. And uh, the township engineer has some concerns, five concerns. So. We want to address these concerns, and our consultant, urban engineer, will present this uh, the scope of the work, 
and the project and the, your township engineers' concerns. So I would like to my urban juniors to come and address this uh, project uh, presentation and concerns. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, let's see. I just want to give you a little background. I, is it all right if I walk over here and talk? Sure, sure. please. Sure. You obviously are very familiar with the intersection since it's right here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, um, previously, when Mom was referring to the previous phase of the project, the concept development phase, um, it, the, the project was a little different. I don't know if you all remember how it was. I did. Designed at that point, they were going to reverse the circulation on the John mm -hmm. We got the project and looked at it and analyzed it. And went, no, it's not going to work very well. So it, it, a lot of the operations didn't work. So we we basically the, the circulation patterns are back to the way they are now. Um, as we looked at it, the project itself is still the same, pretty much the same concept as it always has been. Um, it's a safety's improvement type project. It's uh, what's called HSIP money, Highway Safety Improvement money, which is typically quick fix type safety improvements, um, not necessarily big capital improvements, but low cost safety measures. It's what they call federal highway um, proven safety countermeasures, and it's usually a, a typical um, minor improvements, but usually good for that bank for your buck type improvements for, in terms of safety. Um, the other parts of the project are bike and ped improvements, which um, in today's uh, DOT policy, we got to follow a complete streets policy. I don't know if St. Vincent Township has a complete streets policy also when they do capital improvements, but basically provide multimodal environments, not just for cars, but bikes and pedestrians. So um, the project itself, you know, there's 130 northbound, 130 southbound, <coughs> east-west and then you know the connection over over to the road so you've got the two two signalized intersections um, the improvements that we're going to make are a complete replacement of the traffic signal so all that existing equipment will go away and part of that is to provide a lot better visibility of the signals so I don't know if you've seen um, the newer signals with back plates there's one on Union Avenue just down the street. I, I, I saw it as I was driving up here. Yeah. They kind of have like yellow reflectors. Yes. So you're going to have the bigger long arms with those bigger reflectors over each lane. So it's going to a lot, a lot more visibility there. Um, but I know a lot of the a lot of the access through here. A lot of it seems like to me you guys probably know more than I do since you live here. But a lot of rear end accidents on one Route 130. Um, a lot of that has to do, what we think, is with the visibility of the signals. Somebody coming up here doesn't really see it, but it's kind of blocked. There's a lot of congestion, a lot of things going on there. But we're going to try to clean that up with newer equipment, um, providing providing um, what's called a shared use path along Route 130 northbound, which is basically a shared for bikes and pedestrians. So it's going to be a 10 foot wide. Uh, paved, basically sidewalk, shared use path. Uh, also include sidewalks all around the ramps. So you're going to provide connectivity for pedestrians throughout the, throughout the intersection. Um, part of the vis high visibility crosswalks help with visibility as, as pedestrians are walking, also for drivers. They can see, they see that, they see that, you know, those crosswalks. It helps to visualize what's going on. Um, so that's the main improvement. The other safety improvements, their signals equipment are in the median, you know, within the, where the concrete median is. We're going to take them out. We're going to put in crash cushions for safety improvements there instead of having that blunt end of a concrete barrier. That should help with some safety improvements. Um, a little bit of widening through here to get a little better, better flow, but not a whole lot of widening. Just to give the ramps a little bit more. Right now they're pretty tight. 
maybe I don't know how many couple, couple feet of lighting, but that little bit gives you a little bit better feel. Um, that's primarily the, the project, and the one the one major improvement we do, or somewhat more of improvement from what was previous provided. Um, we are going to provide a, a D cell lane from. I'm not sure what the name of the shopping center is here. There's a there's a wide shoulder there that we can provide uh, access. Right now, you, you have a shared or a decision move here, where it's a shared through or right turn move. Now, this, this traffic can get off and then go through. So you, you don't have that backup as much here. It'll help a little bit with getting traffic to flow. <clears throat> and just for the record, talk about diesel lane on Route 130 going southbound. Correct. Route 130. Right past the Sonic. Right. Connecting from that yeah. driveway. Yeah. I'm just saying, he, when he says here, we can't pick that up on, right. on television. Go ahead. The other um, um, proposed um, improvement is to provide at, at Riverton, uh, that is, that would be East, eastbound. Eastbound. Um, providing a, a, a through left Turn lane and a through lane, so you get two throughs, two lanes through instead of just one receiving lane through. That's out there now. It's going to help with a lot of the backup on Riverton here, um, providing two lanes through. That it'll drop. You can kind of see the, the two lanes will drop back to one here. Um, so that that's primarily the improvements. Just need to get it more. Yeah. The board, I can't see you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have a question? I have a question for you. You know I do. So, the two to one, I do. On that yeah, I'm two to one. Yes, that's going to be horrible. Yeah. But I know that if you want to have any questions now, that's fine. I'm going to ask. The township engineer has comments. I, I don't know if you all have this. this mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. Yes. You can go through it one by one if you want to address them the, and the concerns. Or if you have any other questions right now? Anybody have any questions? Well, Mayor, if I may. So, yes. as the committee's aware, we've had some discussions uh, with our professionals and with representatives of DOT uh, and their professionals. Uh, that's how we arrived at some of the questions that you, you saw. So I think it might be a good idea uh, if we just go through them, since that was really the, the gist of our uh, discussions the past couple months. Um, if that's point. okay, Mayor, if yes, just absolutely. to go, okay. Yes. One thing I'd like to point out is where we are in the process of the project. It's in the preliminary engineering phase. That's where we're, you know, going, we sort of went from concept development, in theory, to go concept development to preliminary engineering. But we kind of went, a little more concept development as we changed the previous schemes, and now we're in preliminary engineering. But this is not set in stone. You know, that's why we're here to discuss it, get discussion back and forth, and, um, and, and hear your concerns. Thank you. So, so your reference is to the April 11, 2023 letter from Remington and Vernick? Yes. And as Mr. Schubiger, our business minister, indicated, that's based upon a number of Issues and concerns the township has raised. So if you, you go through those one by one, you should uh, read the the, uh, the point and then um, our questions so the audience and the people uh, watching at home can understand. Okay, yep. and please keep your voice up and read slowly, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, question slowly. number one is: There are pedestrian safety concerns about the two at grade crosswalks across U.S. Route 130. There's an existing pedestrian bridge. And one or both at grade crosswalks be eliminated. So that's the pedestrian bridge here. Um, we're proposing two crosswalks across Route 130 here. Um, it seems odd to be putting a crosswalk here when you already have a bridge. I think 
think may be part of the concern. Problem with the Petrobras, though, it's not ADA compatible. So we need to provide ADA compatibility. That's part of the um, what you have to do at each intersection. Any PCB guidelines and ADA compatibility guidelines. So when you have a signalized intersection, you have to provide push buttons. You have to provide curb ramps. Um, so you have to you have to have the crosswalk. In order to get that push button. So, given the, the location and the, and the connectivity here that we we're proposing, two crosswalks make sense. You know, one of them may we possibly could eliminate if necessary and, and make people go to the one crosswalk, but you know, we could look at that and investigate it to see if that would make sense. Um, so it's basically, right now, it's, basically it's an accessibility. Right now it's two signalized intersections, but they both would require push buttons and curb ramps. So basically, it's an accessibility issue, sir. Yep. Okay. Um, I, if you if you if you don't mind, can can I ask a question here? I, I understand sure. that the crosswalks are for ADA compatibility, um, or compliance. I, it's a six lane highway. Right. Um, I, and yeah, me, I just, these guys all know, I just got off of crutches and I just got off a of cane. I'm not gonna go across six lanes. Is there any way we can uh, eliminate the crosswalks and work with the overpass to make it ADA compliant? I know that's a, that's a bigger, yeah, that's a bigger financial. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, you know, I just, I, I don't, I don't, in my head, I can't square up making somebody ha who has mobility issues essentially play Frogger on a six-lane highway. Um, that, that, that concerns me. I, I understand your concern that, you know, that, that when you do the signal timing, there's going to be the clearance time to get you across. I mean, I'm not going to make you rush to get through. So it's going to be, you know, the, the timing to get across is, is going to be appropriate. You know, it's not going to be, be two seconds when you get across. Because I was Based I, on that distance, I forget the number. Of you want to give me the number? Yeah, I, I've I've got I've got concerns with that. I, I've got concerns with the with the double light. I mean, they're what 280 and 290 feet apart. 239 feet. 239 feet apart from stop line to stop line. But I remember that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's nice to have a retired Richard. traffic guy, uh, I'm traffic a officer. Traffic sergeant for cinnamon, so I'm very um, familiar with this intersection. But you know, I mean, even you know, if you sit and watch that light or those two lights, they're doing 70 when they come up on the first one. It turns yellow there through the second one. Yellow, red doesn't make a difference. And I, I mean, I was hoping this is the second iteration of, of this plan that we've yeah, seen. I, I was hoping to see something that might address the double light situation because that's that's the biggest problem that we have yeah, I mean, at that intersection, I would say. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I understand. This, this scope of work and this funding for you know safety improvement, you know, a smaller <coughs> not necessarily a quick fix, but we're not that's a small big deal. Yeah. Yeah. The advantage of SMC is a big cost. It's costing too much. Right. Ten million right. and then it takes one million. So it's not really the it would be virtually impossible to take that first intersection light out. It just Yeah, I mean in, in theory, you could you could do one intersection here, but you know you'd be taking all the properties. Right. Yeah, but yeah, as as far as the crosswalks are concerned, I would love to see an option with. Uh, I mean, Cherry Hill Thirty Eight has got an elevator. Collegewood yeah, I mean, Circle has a switchback ramp, which takes a little more real estate. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly considered, but I, I don't know if it would be part of the scope of this project. You know, I mean, we we could take it under advisement to. If anything, to uh, eliminate one of these uh, crosswalks here, uh, here, here, I would personally propose to just get rid of this one, make everybody come across this way because you have uh, both NJ, uh, New Jersey Transit uh, bus stops. Northbound is is this south of the uh, pedestrian overpass and 
this one is also salvaged. So anybody crossing the street here to get the bus would be actually better for them to come across either either side. I mean, this, this intersection, they're not allowed to cross anyway. Uh, when they do, it's usually up the street and go on, oh, and then come across the uh, big lot and get the bus that way. We're done. Um, Just my opinion. Move on to number two, I guess. Regarding the merger, the two lanes to one lane along the southbound lane of Riverton, adjacent to the South Jug Handle entrance, there is concern that this merger will create traffic queuing that will back up into US Route 130. <coughs> um, so that, that's the two lanes here that then take the mm -hmm. one up here. Right. At Laurel Drive, correct. Here, then it tapers to one. Um, we, we don't believe that, that that's a concern. We believe that that would, would flow. We don't believe that's going to back up onto one. Third. Let me just say that's a major issue now uh, with anybody coming from the high school. Anybody in this room has, has gone to the high school, which comes down this road here. Even just trying to get out of Manor Road onto this thing, doubling into two lanes into one would absolutely put people on the highway, without a doubt. And a lot of it would be kids coming from the high school. Um, same thing with anything coming north, uh, I guess westbound from River Road towards the, towards the highway. It also backs up there. That intersection at Laurel Drive would be horrible. I just, I, I've just, I was a traffic sergeant here for almost 20 years, so, and I know trying to get out of it at three o'clock when these kids get out of school or, or, or sports games will tell you it backs up. It backs up from Route 130 almost down to the high school. That's how far it backs up at the light. Now, you, now you're going to have people um, double. No, no, I'm just saying, now, you ha now you're going to have two people, two lanes coming into one, which we know how people are. People are really, they, they don't pay attention to things. That'll absolutely back up that highway. Now you're gonna have people crossing and, yeah. and, and that, that road, as you well know, is one of the most dangerous in the state. And it is a speedway. I can, I can, I'm, I'm telling, I can almost guarantee it. You would have, you would double, triple the accents on that, on that intersection right there. Just my, just my uh, two cents or four cents. See, see, the issue is this. And I have my degree in economics and I know all about cost benefit analysis. And you could put anything you wanted to, to cost and benefits are more qualitative than, than actual, actually quantitative. I think what you see here is you plug in data to a particular intersection. You're looking at it as a, from an engineering standpoint, and from a cost benefit analysis, you look at it as a quantitative analysis. I think what we're saying up here is, yeah, take a look from a qualitative analysis. Who's using this road? It's not, not, not every person using this intersection is the same person using other intersections. I know there's traffic data. I've been through this for 30 years, okay? So I understand all that, but we're saying there's a quantitative evaluation. And since you're still in the partially in the concept stage, we want you to take these qualitative comments back to your folks and give it some serious consideration without going down into the engineering lab and just plugging in numbers. I think we want to get beyond that so that these safety improvements are going to actually end up making it safer. Not just because somebody tells you, not some computer tells you it might, but they actually will be safer on the ground. Do you understand what we're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the consideration here was Provide a little more operational improvement. Right. You know, there's a trade-off. Yeah, I, I get that. A trade -off. We understand that nobody's doing this intentionally. You're trying to make it safer, but we have the local qualitative analysis that we really want you to be aware of. Right. Absolutely. That's why we're here. Right. We're, here we're glad you're here. Thank you. Number three. There's a concern that two southbound lanes of Riverton between US 130 and the South Joe Panel entrance will generate a conflict between vehicles 
that are moving from the right lane to the left lane to enter the jug handle, and vehicles traveling in the left lane. So it's the same same location, um, the same idea that we had to provide that too. And then, you know, the one the one guy in the right lane that wants to get over. So we're gonna that will definitely provide a little leave there if someone is in this lane and does want to get over. So that's definitely there. Yes. Um, so I, I understand your concern. Um, Bill, if you want to add really what it, in combination with what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. By, by creating the two lanes on the west side prior to the traffic lane, having two pockets that are going through and continuing to go through, if you if you as the driver knew you were going to make the left onto the jump handle to access the other zones or something to that effect, you would now have the opportunity to be in a left through lane where the existing condition only has a left turn slot, a through lane which doesn't line up with the left turn with that left lane and then a right turn lane so providing two pockets would give you the opportunity to be in a lane that would then automatically be sort of aligned with the movement that you wanted to make and i think that was the, the theory behind what we were trying to lay out in addition to alleviating that queue that backs up past the location where we are right now that second those two lanes in conjunction it's the operational improvement that that he was mentioning in the last conversation you understand our point though right i do yeah well, it, it does introduce a change to it, obviously. Mm -hmm. It does introduce different Thanks. differences. So it's, it is different. So again, if it may be a trade off for you know, another look at it and come to a conclusion. Uh, number four, as you may be aware, Cinnamons in High School is located on Riverton Road approximately 0.7 miles north of this intersection. <coughs> Most of the traffic generated by student drivers and school buses taken into consideration when developing this concept. Um, definitely look at school buses when we're designing geometrically. And we, we look at, I think when we look at Drivers, we look at all drivers. I don't know that we specifically look at student drivers as a, as a per se, but we look at all drivers. And I understand different drivers have different behaviors. And I understand your qualitative portion of that statement, I think. Um, well, I think it also increases the volume of traffic during that those times as well. So not necessarily students versus adult drivers, but just the amount of people, right. like buses and pedestrian vehicles coming out during those times, I think is really the point of the question. So the bottoms have been, have been counted and uh, are factored in the as far as the geometrics of the, the, the vehicle turn radius for a bus, they've been accommodated on, on curb returns and things of that nature. So just from the strictly the engineering geometric and data collection analysis of traffic operations, the, the data has been acquired and incorporated into the process. Do you know when the traffic counts were done? Uh, traffic <laughs> counts were done at the start of our thing. Like 20, we got the date. March, March, March 22, or April yeah. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. So more on that right now. We, we, had, we had data from the cost of development phase, which basically falls out the wayside because of COVID, traffic patterns change, destinations change, peak hours actually were finally more different. So we, yeah, we, we did a new data collection effort uh, in the spring of 2022. Thank you, Yo. Mayor, may I ask a question now? Yes, sure. Thanks. What do you consider the PM when you got your data, the peak, what, what uh, time? The, wind, uh, the window of time is, I think, typically from like four to 7 p.m. somewhere. Okay, so that's why I asked a question, because that's a, uh, commuting PM peak, but there is a peak at that particular at that area that's probably between 145 and 230, maybe three o'clock. So I think that's something you need to take a look at. Yeah, we can check the data. I know they do AM, mid, and PM. Um, it, it may, the period you're calling, talking about may fall in between all three of those. It's possible you can certainly. That, that might change your data analysis a little bit. On the, on the, the departure from school, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. right. Yep. Certainly. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Uh, 
number five, three in the morning rush, seven to nine a.m. The line for the Duncan Drive drive through may back up, creating circulation issues within the southern drive. Is this considered for the develop, development of the proposed improvement? circulation pattern specifically was not entirely you know you know not entirely you know we typically don't look at that from that perspective you know, we do look at the access of the driveways as part of the geometrics of the of the alignment um, which is obviously part of the, the, um, the site and we looked at the site when hearing concerns from, from the police chief the other day, I think the other week or whatever that was, we looked at it and went, hmm, this is a tough site. So the site itself is tight, so there's not a whole lot of room right. to get people through and out. So you know, we, we went back and forth trying to figure out maybe close to driveways, maybe do something internally, but kind of outside of the scope of the project too. Um, so if, if there's any other suggestions or ideas that concerns regarding that, that you all have um, in terms of solutions, I don't know that, I don't know that we can close these because then you're pretty much putting them out of business. Right, right. Yeah. That's a, or that's is that a solution? Yeah. That's a pretty, and that's a pretty uh, busy Dunkin' Donuts, quite frankly. I'm sorry? That's a pretty busy Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, the traffic literally wraps around the building, yes. through the parking mm -hmm. lot, and out onto the highway into that intersection currently. Out here? Yes. No, that was right there, yes. right there. Right there. And that's, that's all, uh, all week, all week and weekend. That's something that happens. Probably a little bit less on, on Saturday and Sunday, but uh, I know during rush hour, it's... You know, after hearing these concerns, we we look at it in, in, from a, a lot of different ways, and you know, maybe close this driveway to help, or then close that one, or maybe make this out only. So we're thinking about it. So I don't know that we have the perfect solution yet, right. but it, it's under consideration. And if, if you have it's any good, ideas, it's good to hear that. Like one of the concerns we had. The driveways that are along the, the westbound rear wall, the ramp portion of Riverton Road, you know, there's so many in a row there. We try mm -hmm. to figure out, like, right, so we can force people to go in one or the other. It makes sense by closing one or the other. Right. Our concern with that was that it might do what you just said is already happening. It might wrap around, come out from one third, which we definitely <coughs> don't want to right. happen. Uh, with, with that being the high point main line. So to, to know that that's already happening kind of, I guess, compounds what we're already trying to. Right. Um, by, by making some sort of change to, to the limits that we have, which are the, the roadway frontage, we didn't want certainly to create a problem that was worse than existing. But knowing that the existing is already right. in that shape, then you know, it, it helps us sort of continue to brainstorm how our project could potentially help that situation. That's 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 a tough one. It is a tough one. There were you know there were thoughts of closing this and maybe making it everyone come in here and, and you know, kind of recirculate and then, then you get kind of in those shared access agreement things and you know things can it sounds like something that we should have our own internal meeting subject matter experts of access at the Department of Land Transportation and see you know what other experiences that they have that are similar maybe a recognition of a shared access like Steve's trying to indicate maybe there's some, there's already a shared access point next to Bagalotti not the driver mm -hmm. to Bagalotti Correct. but that point is a shared access by being the documents of all three properties. So maybe something could be done along the 130 frontage, and then those two could serve as, you know, I'm just speaking out of turn because I, I don't know if any of this can be or not, but we could certainly bring this back to the subject matter I think with the Department of the Division of Access Management. And the project, and as part of the project process, there's an access review process with the Bureau of Access Design space. Currently have this plan as it's laid out for reviewing it. I think we actually got comments back from them today. 
So I'm not sure. I haven't looked at them yet. If they've made any comments specifically that site yet, and what we can do there. So it's things are being things are happening in review. The process we have this conversation. Okay, thank you. Chief, you have some? Yes, I think, I think before we start closing driveways and altering patterns of uh, businesses, I think you need to look at the other side of that circle because you use words like operational improvement and it's not an improvement in my uh, personal and professional opinion. You're taking two, line, two rows of traffic now and you're going across Route 130 east and you're gonna now merge them into one lane. And you're gonna merge them into one lane at probably the worst point at that road you could. You have on the right side, which is the south part of the Westfield Friends alternate parking lot. On the west side, you have the rear entrance to the Bagelotti where people are trying to get out and make a left or make a right. Then you have the people from Laurel trying to get out and make a right to come this way on top of the people going to Jug Hammer. You have the perfect scenario for multiple accidents, and I just can't. I just can't see how that the word improvement even came up in that conversation, because it's not. And where it backs up is what uh, Mayor McGill was saying: is if you're in the right lane, and you don't realize over here. You don't see Dunkin' Donuts to you right about here. Here's Dunkin' Donuts. You're not from this area. You're driving. You're like, oh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. I want to go there. But guess what? I can't because I'm in the wrong lane because this person's going to go across unless we crisscross. And where do we crisscross? At the worst point in town where everybody's merging. 130. Now we're going to merge right here. We're going to crisscross right here. This person that was in the left lane is now saying, well, I want to go to Wood Park and play basketball. Well, how do they do that? Well, they have to continue to go straight. How do they continue to go straight? They have to cut that person off and also stop the person turning the west of the stop the person who's able to go in, and that's assuming that the shirt was not already backed up. So if you go over here and worry about this Duncan Dillon's and this parking lot, and this driveway is all in the point. The plan does not work. Well, we hear what you're saying with that part. The, the question five that we were discussing was related to the Dunkin' Donuts, which sounds like there's existing problems. Even if we, even if we didn't do the two lanes. That's correct. The That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. already spilled down to the person. It's still something that the project is trying to accommodate. Even if we took out the, 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 the two lanes, we spilled that kind of signal. And the rear end accidents that you talked about on Route 130 weren't from visibility. They were from two lights being 239 feet. Right? 239. 239 Correct. feet because the trucks with the air brakes can't stop in time for the second light. It has nothing to do with visibility because the sun comes up over there and it's over here. So by that time, there's no sun in your face. It's just people can't physically stop. They're doing 70 miles an hour, and you want them to stop in such a short time to make that light. Coming out of Dunkin' Donuts, everybody knows you got to look, wait for it to turn green, do three Hail Marys, and then go. You know, let's call it what it is. It's not visibility, it's those two lights. The only good part I like about this. Is that deceleration lane going southbound? Though I do like that. The decel lane going southbound is a dream. So, so, I've been so, so if for years. let me give you some kudos there because I do like that <laughs> one because I'm always trying to come back to work from that area and I can't get in because the line's backed up. Come from Starbucks. I don't go to Starbucks. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions while we're grabbing here? Yeah, no, sir. Thank we'll you see going. you back here next year. <laughs> thank you for go. Thank you for going through all the questions and at, at, at a time, and, and for coming. I mean, it's, yeah, any, quite frankly, it's, any other additional questions, comments? Obviously, um, Ahmed, Tim, Jeff. Why were the surveys on properties? 
He's got to come up. Ma'am, could you come up to the to the to the uh, state your name and address for the record? I was really going to do this at open, but could you come up. Yes, that's yes, the street, sir. right? Yep, the first one. Hi, I'm Phyllis McCauley. And about two weeks ago, we had okay, surveys. Sorry, address two, please. Oh, to Laurel. We're the second house after two weeks ago. Surveyors were there. They, I talked to them. They told me they were surveying 15 feet in on my neighbor across the street, which is one Laurel Drive, and my house halfway down. And they said they're going to make an extra lane there. That's what the surveyor told me. <laughs> so we, there would have been a surveying effort. Our, our, survey, yeah. our surveyors worked a year ago. Yeah. I don't think that our surveyors didn't go out. No he while. said he was for DOT. So, so the, and the, the, the my concern was no one notified us. I he was on my grass, so I went out there and he said, "Yeah, we're surveying in 15 feet." He said they're going to chop 15, you know, up to 15 feet. That's what he told me. Yeah, can, why don't we, if I may, Mayor, can, why, don't, why don't we focus on how is this current concept could it potentially impact well, the resident? Uh, yeah, so why don't we start there? Question. Because we don't know how it got here, but just so they know how it may impact their property. And I believe I we're talked to Paul. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because if, if I at was all, like, should I put a sale sign on my house? This might be quick. Oh, no, if it don't does put a sale sign on your house. The, the, only, the, only, um, the only impacts are going to be a little bit of corner, corner uh, radius improvements at Laurel. I don't believe there's any right away takings on the property. Yet. That's, I'm just telling you what he told me. Which one? Ma'am, did you happen to get a business card or CE identification or anything? No. He was very nice and he was gave me a lot of information. He also told me they were taking down the walk across. So extraordinary typically bigger than the book version process. That's what I think. Is that point of the project that Laurel Drive essentially tied with the project back into the existing condition. So any surveying effort, I'm not even sure if it was ours, but if it was our our sub doing it. He's just capturing topo so that we can create surfaces to design and tie things into. As far as the, if you, if you want to come to the floor, you can help. Okay. Um, could it have been the access to the floor? I don't know. Let's take over the meeting. Because there was an access to the floor. Yeah. 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 Excuse me. Uh, we just need to have this on the record. So if, uh, you know, if you're going to. We're pointing to. We like to Laurel Drive. Concerned with potential right away takes on their property. There there will no. based on the based on the design that we have now, you, you will have so a this one. This is the There's a grading easement that was by the grading that was ground back into the Okay, it's proposed. It's just proposed. Yeah, please based on conversation today, this may not happen. Right. All this is related to the two lanes they bring into one, so that's not part of the project. And the foot for the project comes later. If you just pull the one, they be. So do not put your house up for sale. We just make a lot more sure. There's no acquisition. Well, I'll talk for a minute. Homes being bought. I get that. I get that. There. I think you got another resident wants to talk. Sir, I got you. This is a resident from one. Uh, one Laurel Drive. Come up. We're Rich DeFranco. Name and address for the record, Mr. Rich DeFranco, One Laurel Drive. How does it affect my house? <laughs> I'm across the street. You said it was that easement. What does it want to do to my property? Yeah. That's right to the point. So, you're, you're, again, all this is a digital option. I know it's all right. So, current, current design, there's a, a little bit of curb Lanes tapered on the other side of the road, and they're proposed right now to accommodate that sidewalk and that easement 
You got this right. It's two and one. Two laurel, one laurel. Yeah. Yeah. You can just walk around. Yeah. You're gonna. <laughs> She's gonna hold it. He'll get it better than us. Like they're really good. He had the budget. To the curb line, correct. Yeah, so from the curb to my house. The stretch. It's all made, right? Well, no, the stretch. Yeah, well, yes. There's a, there's a border with the property. Yes, there is. It's right. 10 feet or so between the curb and the property. Okay. Kevin. Okay. So that, who that ball was, Gavin? So they pay the tax for it, or don't make sure it's tax for that? They're not going to try to tax it. Are you aware that there is a gas line here? Yes. The sewer line is also there. Yeah, I'm sure they know what the lines are. Anyone else? This guy's going on. Like going to my heart for Is the map and the comments going to be available for the residents to see? Um, Any rush? Sure. It's not a. It's, it's, preliminary yeah, it's preliminary. It's not final. I mean. You could show you, it as a preliminary plan on your website. Yeah, yeah, that's not a, not a really great idea because this is in the processing and the review stage. And if we put that up, people are might get concerned about things. That are, I, so I understand your point, but I don't know that that's right. a good idea. It's, it's what we call deliberative right now, okay? Right. You know that from Oprah, right? Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you so much. All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to have our budget introduction by roll call only, no comments. Uh, resolution 2023 57, 2023 municipal budget to be advertised in the Burlington County Times. Uh, public hearing is scheduled for May 15th. 2023. Can I have a motion to introduce resolution 2023-57, please? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to introduce resolution 2023-57. Thank you, Mr. Horner. I'll second that. Roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Crago. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple ordinance introductions. Uh, Ordinance introduction 2023-2, authorizing capital improvements, uh, appropriating 2,132,500 dollars, authorizing the issuance of a general obligation bond in the aggregate principal amount of up to 2,025,875 dollars to be adv advertised in the Bruins County Times. Public hearing is scheduled for May 15th, 2023. Can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2023-2? I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. Can I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Cravel. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Cravel. Aye. Mr. Seacrest. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Ordinance 2023-3, the 2023 salary ordinance to be advertised in the Burlington County Times. Public hearing is scheduled for May 15th, 2023. I'll make a motion to introduce 20, Ordinance 2023-3. Can I have a second, please? Uh, I will second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Conda. Roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Crayville. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the fourth one, Ordinance 2023-4, amending, revising, and supplementing Chapter 498 of the General Code entitled Vehicles, Towing. Oh, do we pull that? No. No. No, sorry. My mind just clicked. Uh, Towing and storage of to be advertised in the Burlington County Times public hearing is scheduled for May 15th, 2023. Uh, I will make a motion to uh, introduce Ordinance 2023-4. Can I have a second, please? Okay. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Seagrass. Roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Craveville. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. 
Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Last one for tonight, uh, Ordinance 2023-5, amending, revising, and supplementing the code of the Township of Cinnaminson to establish new chapter entitled Amusement Devices to be advertised in Burlington County Times. Public hearing is scheduled for May 15th, 2023. Uh, can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2023-5? I will make a motion to introduce Ordinance 2023-5. Thank you, Mr. Conda. I'll second that. Roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Crayville. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Condo. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Schubiger, can you please give us some detail regarding the resolutions on tonight's consent agenda, please? Sure, Mayor. It's a very brief consent agenda for your consideration. The first is a resolution to award a contract for portable light towers. Our police chief, Calabrese, recommended that the township contract with state contract vendor War shower generator for the purchase of these two portable light towers. And our CFO, Ms. Edmondson, has determined that funds are available for that purpose and recommends the governing body authorize the award of contract in the amount of $24,999.98. And then there is a raffle July 17th for the Community House of Morristown. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Schubiger. Uh That is the end of the consent agenda. Um, I have a motion to open up public comment on consent uh, agenda items only. I'll make that motion. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. Voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. The ayes have it. Public comment on the consent agenda is now open. Please state your name and address for the record. Seeing no one come forward, may I have a motion to close public comment on the consent agenda? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Seacrest. I'll second that. Voice vote, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Mrs. Crable. Uh, can I have a second? I'll Mr. second Mayor. that. Oh. Nope. Thank you, Ms. Conda. Uh, all in favor? Yep. Roll call. A uh, roll call, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Man. Horner. <laughs> Aye. Mrs. Craybell. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Uh, approval of meeting minutes from April 3rd, 2023. Did everybody have a chance to read them? Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions before we go? No, sir. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 3rd, 2023? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for April 3rd, 2023. Can I have a second, please? I'll no. second. No, you're doing it. I'll Thank you, Mrs. Crable. Uh, I'm going to abstain from this because I was I was absent for that night. Uh, roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Crable. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of bills. Can I have a motion to approve the bill list? I will make a motion to approve the bills. Thank you, Mr. Conda. Uh, I will second that. Roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Mr. Horner. Aye. Mrs. Craville. Aye. Mr. Seagrass. Aye. Deputy Mayor Conda. Aye. Mayor Miguel. Aye. Thank you. Okay, now it's the time of uh, the uh, program. We get to staff and professional comments. Uh, any comments from our staff professionals this evening? Nothing from me, Mayor. Mr. Shoebaker? No, sir. Thank you. You guys? Thank you. All right. Um, Okay, then we'll go on to public comment. Uh, I will make a motion to open public comment. Can I have a second, please? I will second that. Thank you, Mr. Condom. Uh, voice vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Public comment is now open. Please come to the forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, everyone. Renee Oler Davis, corner of Hunter and Davis. I want to say I'm thrilled to hear about the 1.1 million improvement for Union Landing. I'd like to know if you can tell me what that entails. Mm. Sure. Uh, so the next step in that phase, now that we've secured the grant funding, uh, is for our engineering firm, Remington and Vernick, to go through and do this, the whole scope and the design for that project. Um, so that's still a little bit open, but in the grant proposal, it was for sidewalks um for quite quite a a span along union landing road i don't know the exact mm -hmm. linear feet but um and mm -hmm. associated sort of upgrades so uh that's going to be worked on it takes a while 
Yeah. Um, and then we got to go out to bid. We got to do the whole process. It, it's going to be a little bit of a while before you actually see anything. But as you said, it is great news. Uh, quite frankly, uh, sometimes it, it takes a little longer to hear about uh, grants. This one was actually pretty quick. We we're pretty happy about it. And it's a big number, as you stated. So Congratulations. The other thing, um, do you know if that will include lighting maybe and crosswalks? as well as sidewalks? So uh, I can tell you the crosswalks is actually part of a program that our public works department has been working with another contractor. Uh, I believe that work is going to be starting next week uh, throughout the township. Uh, and then the lighting, th that's in coordination with PSC and J because they handle the lighting along that stretch, which we've already done already. But since we got we, we secured this grant funding, we'll go back and work with them on seeing how else we might want to work with them on that. And the only other question I had pertaining to that was we got one electronic sign, speed sign. Um, are we still in the works for the other one? I know the township was possibly paying for one. I don't know who paid for that one. And CBOX was going to pay for one. So do you know yeah, anything uh, about that? Yep. So there's one out there now. And our police chief and his staff are analyzing the data, taking a little bit of time to see what kind of impact that that one Trail or the radar sign has on traffic flow and uh, the benefit. They've also recently purchased some some trailers that I know they're looking at possibly putting one out there in it in uh, in addition to the one that's already there. We're going to get it out there. So uh, I can't give you a date. I don't know exactly when. I'm working with the police chief on that now. If he he's here, if he knows exactly, uh, I don't know if he has a date either. But we're we're working on it. So the two speed trailers we just got in last week, we're testing them out. Uh, one's on Andover right now, and we're, we're collecting the data to see how well. And then the goal is to put it on Union Landing, and then, because it's mobile, put it in different spots to oh, see perfect. what's the best spot to put it before we put a permanent fixture. I like so that. we just got them this week, so it'll summer's coming, so we'll be able to get a good read on it. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Davis. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Kenneth Davis. Uh, <laughs> that's my wife. Um, so, uh, so the uh, 210800 Street, right on the corner of Hunter and Davis, just to reiterate. First of all, uh, I understand this, this is concerning the pickleball uh, court uh, and the tennis court. I understand that there's still some debate. There's, we're not at the point of actually contracting for the work yet, and that even if we were, the decision would probably made it the earliest uh, at the end of summer, which I think gives us time to, to deliberate about what we actually want. And I understand there's been a suggestion by those residents in the neighborhood that they want to see all, all pickleball there. And there's been the suggestion that we can make courts that actually provide for both, which nobody wants. Um, the, the third option, of course, is to make sure that that particular uh, plot of land supports a real actual pickleball court and a real actual uh, tennis court, which is uh, what we have been asking for as a community when we come to visit you. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of our discussion of this over and over. It's kind of like a regular uh, comment we've made here. And I, I, as I understand, there's others in the neighborhood who disagree with us. Um, that I understand. What I don't understand is why they're not here speaking to all of us and to you about why they feel this way, or at least making their case so everyone can hear it. And so I would, I would ask that you give greater weight to those who are actually interested or seem to be interested in the workings of sentiments and government. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Davis. You knew where to go. Hold on, see you later. Mike Goins, one hundred for now. So on April sixth, uh, the township and the police department and two residents met at Morgan Cemetery. Overall, it was a good meeting. I thought uh, lots of promises, lots of excuses, also on their part of why they can't do anything. They are starting to clean it up a little bit. 
the litter's still there, though. Um, I don't know why they just can't get a crew out there and clean the litter out. Um, you know, they said about the, the shortage of people that work there, and they only have one guy, but the litter's there. Um, I did meet with him a couple days later, and they are cleaning out really good. I've also seen the police cars running through the cemetery every night, it seems, now. Uh, I don't know if that's a new thing, but I do notice that also. So the police seems like they're going out there. But I, the litter, to me, they should be held accountable and made to go pick that up. Uh, and as an afterthought, they did talk about the tires that are along the one property. Uh, they said it to me and asked about the DEP, just so you know. That's all. Thank but you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. <clears throat> Anyone else? Seeing none come forward, uh, can I have a motion to close public comment? I'll make a motion to close public comment. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I'll second that. Voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. The ayes have it. Uh, now on the committee comment. Any comments from committee tonight? Anyone? Oh, Sorry, Mr. Speakers? Um... I just I want to thank the, the Public Works Department, Emergency Management Services, and everyone that helped after Tornado. It was nice to hear from residents. Uh, there, you know, a lot of times we hear from residents when there's issues and there's problems, but we heard a lot from residents thanking the Public Works and the Emergency Management for what they did. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well Mr. Nothing further. Thank you. Nothing for me, Mr. Connor. I think. Committeeman Segrist said exactly what I wanted to say, so thank everyone. Thank you. In those direct words? Or? In those direct words. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you guys must think alike. All right, um, I have nothing else either tonight, so uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, the ayes have it. Meeting is now adjourned.